So this is Scott Manson. I'm from Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. Uh, I've spent uh, the last uh, 17 years at uh, SEL working on various uh, grid solutions and including microgrids up to um, macrogrids for entire countries. The brief presentation I have today is to share uh, the story of our participation in the NREL sponsored microgrid a dual stage procurement challenge, that's its technical name. We like to call it a microgrid shootout. It was a opportunity for us and all of our competitors around the world to put our best foot forward to Enril and provide a uh, microgrid solution both in uh, in terms of functionality as well as cybersecurity and be evaluated by uh, one of the nation's leading research laboratories. So this participation included a two-step. Uh, first step was a uh, down selection from a number of candidates down to two. Uh, the second step of the procurement challenge was a down selection to a final um, selected control vendor, and that was SEL. This included a power hardware in the loop and a control hardware in the loop in the testing phase. The power hardware in the loop was stage one, control hardware in the loop was stage two. In addition, there was a cybersecurity evaluation by Enrol uh, during this uh, uh, functional testing to confirm uh, or deny the, uh, um, the proximity to uh, standards such as NERC SIPs, NIST, ISA, and others. We look for, for vulnerabilities most especially, and we did we performed flawlessly there. The key performance parameters we'll talk about in a moment, and Brian did mention them. Uh, this is the Banshee power system model. This is the same model used by MIT Lincoln Laboratories during their symposium in uh, February of 2017. Uh, Enrol took this model and added uh, their control hardware in the loop simulation laboratory here shown with the red box, the real generators, uh, PVs, batteries. And here it is. This, they, they used their grid simulator as a source. They had a diesel generator in the yard. They had battery systems and photovoltaics with real inverters and real equipment. Our microcontroller's objective was to dispatch control those equipment in the yard simultaneous to all of the virtualized equipment on the control hardware in the loop model. Here shown is the, the, the interconnect. We had interconnects between our uh, microgrid controller over a software-defined network, that's our SDN. Uh, in, and that interface included a multitude of uh, communication protocols, including 61850, Modbus, and other. The test that was put, uh, we were put up against for both the control hardware in the loop and the power hardware in the loop testing was uh, similar to something uh, perhaps you've heard of in North America, like a marine mud run. Uh, anything and everything that can be thrown at you will be. Uh, the li entire life of a microgrid was thrown at us in a 100-minute run. This was evaluated objectively by a MATLAB routine running uh, uh, in real time. Uh, the script was evaluating our performance on a number of key performance parameters. Here you see the actual mud run, the actual test sequence. We have irradiance changing. We have uh, grid, grid frequencies and voltages moving. We have uh, demand response requests. We have faults on generators, uh, inner ties, uh, interconnects tripping out, uh, motors tripping out. So a very difficult set of, 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 of tests that uh, make it impossible to be perfect. In fact, there had to be some decisions made. We'll talk about that in a minute. The, here are the key performance parameters selected by Brian and his team. Uh, the most most especially interesting one for me was resiliency and reliability. Uh, we ran a few tests and observed the response in terms of scoring and realized very quickly that uh, resiliency uh, was the way to achieve the highest uh, uh, score. So we focused on the technology which we had perfected uh, in the oil and gas industry for, for nearly 20 years. Uh, but of course, additionally, we had to observe minimum fuel consumption, minimum emissions, uh, of course, uh, uh, of course, using as much of that low cost photovoltaic energy as we could and using battery storage as best we could. 
here's some examples. Here's the real-time scoring for one of the runs uh, for the KPP1. This is the resiliency and reliability parameter. Uh, what you'll see is that you have interruptible priority and critical loads. If we were to have tripped critical loads, we would have been docked a great deal of money. Uh, what we found, though, is that critical times when there was massive loss in generation or loss of the intertype is that a, a far better uh, result was achieved by dipping into interruptible and priority loads with a very fast subcycle load shedding system. This, this stabilized the system instantly, prevented those inverters from tripping off, and then allowed us to reestablish a, uh, a safe and, and, and normal operation uh, of those uh, microgrids. In fact, this microgrid, if you'll recollect to the first one line, uh, broke into three microgrids, technically four if you chose to. Okay, so the next key performance parameter was fuel consumption. Of course, the objective here was to use as little fuel as possible. Uh, but we did use diesel. At times, it was uh, necessary to use a lot of diesel to improve the uh, reliability and to cover times when there was shading while you were islanded, et cetera, et cetera. Power quality was an interesting metric. This was about grid, uh, you, this was a matter of voltage and frequency deviations from nominal. And what we would see is that during off-frequency events, uh, uh, part of our objective was to provide grid support. And so our controller, as, as it does in hundreds of field installations worldwide, uh, provides uh, grid stabilization support. And here are, was the typical uh, uh, final scoring. Uh, this was towards the end of our runs. You can see we ended with right around 3,000 US dollars over a 100 minute run. The dark blue line is the final score, the totalized score. And you can see that we were, of course, using money on diesel, and we were, uh, but we were, we were gaining money uh, by focusing on keeping the lights on for critical customers. Now, I'll show the same plot that Brian did. Um, and I, I observe, I'll share some things here. So the first part of this, uh, these are all the runs that we performed during the hardened loop testing. These shaded blue is the control hardware in the loop uh, portion of the test. And what you'll see is that uh, uh, we, we achieved the, those $3,000 numbers towards the end of our runs. Uh, the second part was the control hardware mode testing and then again we achieved those same three thousand dollar runs but what's interesting as soon as we switched over to control hardware testing we had new communication interfaces new things to go wrong and it was like commissioning a real power system uh, but it does point out that we achieved a significant improvement through control hardware loop testing um, but then again another 10 percent approximately 10 15 percent improvement um, uh, improvement by by performing power hardening testing. Now it does it does say that about 80 to 85 percent of the uh, performance can be achieved with only control hardware with testing. But what we have observed is you can get another 10 to 15, perhaps even 20 percent improvement uh, by by going through with a full power hardening test. And for new systems, I think new innovative different systems, uh, we're advocating at SCL both PHIL and, C and CHIL. Uh, pardon me, I see a small error in the slide here. But uh, where the 5,000 improvement was with power hardening with testing. Uh, but what we, in all of our PowerMax projects worldwide, we have mandated for over uh, 14 years that every project uh, be tested in a control hardening loop environment. And, and this is the reason why. It's about quality, it's about delivering on time and on promise. So the products used to uh, win both the cybersecurity and the uh, microgrid challenge were the 3555 real-time automation controller. This is our quad-core, uh, highest horsepower uh, real-time engine. Uh, about a dozen PLCs capacity are in this single box. Uh, we have we had the PowerMax microgrid control libraries uh, loaded onto that uh, hardware platform. That's the uh, most evolved uh, PowerMax uh, set of libraries. This was developed uh, 
by myself and many others uh, in the oil and gas and the VOD industries for maximum reliability of their power system. Okay, then finally the 2740S. This is a completely different approach to uh, cybersecurity and one that uh, achieved us perfect scores at the Enro uh, competition. If we look into those products, and I'll take any questions you might have, and Wallace, I'll, I'll take the lead. Thank you very much for your presentation, Scott. It was really interesting.